Okay, now in this video, we'll continue with the same frame relay, but, uh, but in this, we'll be discussing about the lab, how to implement the basic frame relay point to point configurations. So for implementing and verifying this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some routers here, router one, which is acting as my site one, and the router two is acting as my site two. And I'm going to use one more router, a normal router, any platform router it can be. So which is having two interfaces, and then I'm connecting my router to the router and then router to router. Now this middle router will be acting as my frame rate switch. Now in this, I'm going to show you some of the basic implementations like what kind of configurations generally service portal will do for, for having some communication between, uh, between uh, two different sites. So let us see. So finally, what we are doing is we are going to assign some IP address on 10.001 here. And we need to ensure that this 10.001 should be able to communicate with 10.002, the connected interface on the opposite side over the frameless switch. And we'll be using some DLC values here. I'll be using 100 on this side and the DLC value 200 on this side because uh, the actual forwarding inside the frame relay uh, switch or frame relay network will be happening based on the DLC values. Now, if you are using a small basic point to point connections, we just need to go to the interface which you are connecting here as zero by zero. And then we just need to give no shutdown and the IP address. Now these two commands are common commands which we use. And the default encapsulation on the serial interface will be HDLC. And, but we need to change this encapsulation to frame delay. And there's no need to do any mapping here. No mapping is required because we are completely relying on the dynamic mapping done by the service portal. But only the thing we need to do is we need to ensure that we are using an encapsulation of frame delay on, on the router one on a zero by zero interface. Now the same configurations goes on the other side as well. Same thing, we just need to give encapsulation frame delay and then make the interface up and assign the IP addresses. Now, once we do this on the router one and router two, you will not see the communication happens because still we need to configure the router, middle router as a frameless switch. Now, in general, the service provider, what he will do is whatever the router is using, it can be any normal router. So in my case, I'm using 3725 series routers here, which is connecting between router one to router two. And this router, the first command we use is this command frameless switching inside the global configuration mode. Now, once you give this command, we are going to make a router to act as a frameless switch. So we are going to make this router as a, to act as a frameless switch. And we are saying that this router is no more forwarding the packets based on the IP. It's going to forward based on the DLC values. And then we need to go to the interface S0 by zero. We are going to give no shutdown command and then encapsulation frame relay. These two commands are common what we do on the router as well. No need to give any IP addresses, but instead we have to give a command called frame relay interface type DC. Now, if you just get back to the basic commands or what we basic things what we have done, now the router is a DT device. And here in my scenario, whenever you make a specific router as a frameless switch, uh, it, it should be a DC device now, but still the default interface type will be DT only unless you change it to DT. Now here, I'm not going to use this particular interface as a DC, DT interface. It's not going to receive any more clocking. It's going to generate some clocking. So this interface has to be DC because it is no more a customer device. It's a, it's a service portal device. So we need to change these interfaces on the frameless switch to DC kind of type mandatory if you want the frameless switching to happen. And then this interface, anyway, it is a DTE. So it's by default is DTE. We are just changing this interface type to DCE inside the frameless switch, mandatory. And then we need to define that uh, frameless route. Anything coming on this will be coming as 100 which means I'm saying that anything coming receiving on this interface will be received as 100 and then it will be forwarded on S0 by 1. That's what I'm saying coming as 100 and it should be forwarded on S0 by 1 with a DLC value of 200. So this is how the customer service port is going to map the traffic from customer, the same customer site going on another customer site. Now the service portal will we should have some clear idea on what is the traffic received by the customer A 
and what is the other interface going towards this side. So similar way if I have one more site, the service portal will say anything coming on this interface will be 10100. Uh, in fact, he'll be using some other DLC values, so 101, and then it should be forwarded to something called 201 on the other side, on some other interface, maybe a 0 by 2. Now this way the service portal will, will map the DLC value from one end to another end. So like that, if you go with some bigger, bigger calculations, it's going to add some more and more frame relay mapping commands. Now we call this configuration. This is a major configuration where it is going to do something called mapping and we call that as frame delay mapping. Mapping of the local DLC value with the remote interface and the remote DLC value. Now the same thing we need to do on the other side as well. Anything coming on this interface is 200. So I'm assuming the DLC value is 200 on S0 by 1 and it should be forwarded on S0 by 0 as 100. So let's see this configuration on the command line for testing purpose. So I'm going to use, I got some routers here, router 1, 3, 2, and I'm going to configure this router here. This router 3 is acting as my frameless switch, and I'm going to add some connections as S0 by 0. I'll go with S0 by 0 here, and S0 by 1 going to S0 by 0. I think the same, same kind of connections we are using here as well. And then now I'm going to the command line of these devices. So now you can see the command line of these devices here. I got a router one and this router one is uh, not configured with any of the configurations here. So I got router one and I'm going to my S0 by zero interface. Now the first command I'm going to say encapsulation frame relay, no shutdown command, no shutdown command. And then I'm going to define some IP address uh, any IP address we can use. I'm giving some 10.001 as per my diagram with a default subnet mask. And then no shutdown command. Uh, if you want, you can add some frame relay DLC value. There is frame relay map. Probably this is something more applicable in point to multi point connections. But in case of point to point connections, we don't need to map the local DLC values with the remote IP addresses. So in case of multi point connections, we need to do some mappings. And the same thing I'm going to do on the router 2 as well. On the router 2, I'm going to my interface S0 by 0, no shutdown, encapsulation frame relay, and then assigning the IP address 10.002, and then 255000. And then if I verify show IP interface brief, now I can see the interface seems to be up, but but I, sh I, sh I will not be able to ping to the opposite side of the interface because uh, we need to still configure the frameless switch. Now I'm going to the middle switch that is router 3 and the first command I'm going to say frameless switching. Now this command is going to make a router to act as a frameless switch. Let us change the host name as well, frsw, just to uh, ensure that we are on the right, uh, um, right device. And now most of all the configuration goes on the interface as 0 by 0. And the first command we need to say encapsulation frame delay. And then we need to say no shutdown command. And then we need to say frame relay INTF type. And the interface type will be DC. And then we need to say frame relay route. And then what is the local DLC value, input DLC value, which is receiving. And it should be followed on which interface, S1, S0 by 1. And the output DLC value that is 200. So, and then I can exit back. Now, if you try to verify the same commands we need to apply on the switch uh, on the other interface as well, interface S0 by 1, encapsulation frame relay, no shutdown, and interface DLC values. Uh, if you want to change the LMI, we can still change the LMI type. Uh, there's a command called LMI type to change it on the frameless switch, but I'm just going with the default LMI type here. Now we can say frame relay route. Uh, input DLC value is 200 over here and it should be sent on S0 by 0 with 100. That is a remote DLC value. And now we can verify with a command called show frame layer route. Now right now you'll see them as inactive and hopefully after some time you should see some active messages. Now this is my input DLC value will be sent on 200 and then output DLC value also will be 100 to 200 something like this. 
So now you can see if I give show film the route, you should see some active messages, which means the mappings are okay. And also on the router one, we can use show frame delay map command to see my local mapping. The remote IP address is mapped with my local DLC value. You can see here. Uh, if anything set to be sent to 10.002, it go with uh, with a DLC value of 100, and it's an automatic learning method, and the status is active here. Now there are three different active messages you will see. Normally you will see something called active. Active is going to represent that. Uh, everything is perfect now if you see something called deleted state most likely it will be mostly issue with the local device configurations and if you see something called inactive mostly there might be some issue with the remote device configurations so based on these status messages we can we can uh, figure out what might be the possible reason for for the frame lay mapping not coming up and then now if i try to ping from the router one you can see from the router one, I'm able to ping to the opposite side of the interface over the frameless switch. Now, similar way, you can also go with some point to multipoint configurations, but there's something not really required at the CCNA level. Uh, there's something not required, but you should know the exact configurations like how the mapping is done. Uh, on the frameless switch, there's something really no need to do that. Uh, but on the router side, you, you can also do some mapping manually by using frame map commands.